the Fox 5 Studios. This is the Red Zone Sports Show. Oh, you best believe we do in the wave on the Red Zone tonight. The Running Rebels got the whole city doing the wave. A 10-0 start for the first time since 1990. Something special is happening here in Las Vegas. It don't matter where UNLV plays the Thomas and Mac, the Dollar Loan Center, the MGM Grand. They're gonna win. Kevin Kruger in studio tonight to break down his squad's two dubs this week against Hawaii and Washington State. And it was a highlight reel last night from Keyshawn Gilbert, the sophomore guard. Durango High School, stand up. Gilbert dropped the game high 25 points as Coach Kruger is starting to notice something about his team 10 wins into the season. I would say the reputation of our team is, is starting to form a, a lot of to the way Keyshawn Gilbert plays. And when you're the primary ball handler and you're the point guard and you've got those responsibilities, uh, that's what you're going to get a lot of times. And I don't think there's anybody that I'd rather have that, uh, you know, is kind of a, an embodiment of the way our team plays. I think you watch EJ, EP, Lou, Keyshawn, Vic, I mean, David, of course, if you go down the list, they play incredibly hard. A big week here in Las Vegas, UNLV Athletics named Barry Odom the head coach of UNLV football. It was an exciting atmosphere at his press conference on Wednesday as the former defensive coordinator from Arkansas tells us he wants to be at the forefront of this community. You're going to hear me talk about a lot about family and about culture and about habits and about details and about outworking people and about toughness and about discipline and about all the things that our brand is going to be and what our DNA becomes. I've got a chance to meet, as I said, with our student athletes. That's going to on go today. I think the most important part for me at this point is community involvement, is recruiting the city and making sure that they know UNLV football is where you're supposed to go when you're a great student athlete in the city of Las Vegas. I'm going to make sure that we make our point very loud and clear with those facts. Another great show on tap tonight. Welcome into the Reb Zone. Can't wait to dive into all the big news here on the Reb Zone. New football coach, new venues played in this week. we got a lot to go over. A little bit of history that we're witnessing right now with the Running Rebels. And we've got some Kruger family in the studio as well. So it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a great show. But coach, before we dive into another dominant week from your guys, I just want to pull up a tweet from the Mountain West that they tweeted earlier this morning that had me laughing. I don't know if it had you laughing. I love Michael Scott, big fan of the office, but three undefeated teams in the Mountain West, the only league in the country right now with three undefeated teams, New Mexico 9-0, Utah State 8-0, and the Running Rebels are 10-0, their first 10-0 start to a season since 1990. So much excitement here in Las Vegas around your team. What is it like to see your team day in and day out? And are you just proud of, of the hard work you're seeing from your staff and your guys each night this season? Yeah, I mean, uh, there were a handful of games, of course, where we could have slipped up at any point and, and looked back and, and learned a tough lesson potentially or just learned a lesson uh, with losing to a good team. But guys have continued to fight, work hard, prepare. And, uh, and, and I think with an older group, when they understand. You know, you're now at, well, they understood at 7-0, and you're going to get a good punch at 8-0, and 9-0. And now at 10-0, and with a great San Francisco team coming in next week, understanding that uh, we're, we're going to start getting some good attention and, uh, and we're going to start uh, playing playing guys that are that are hungry to kind of end their streak. Yeah, one down, one to go. That's what I've heard in your building. I think Jordan McCabe also tweeted, just everyone doing their job right now is, is, is building that consistency. But let's head out to MGM Grand last night. A fun atmosphere on the strip. There's the guy who dropped a career high 25 points last night, the sophomore Keyshawn Gilbert, UNLV, looking to stay undefeated against their first Pac-12 opponent of the season. Washington State comes out hot, three back-to-back -back threes, and the Cougars are on top 11-2 early. Well, a huge loss for UNLV just minutes into the ball game. Elijah Parquet, UNLV starting guard, would take a big fall and not return to the game. Looks like he hurt his left knee right there, but the running Rebels stepped up without EP last night. UNLV started to heat up. Jackie Johnson from deep and UNLV's finding some momentum on offense here. Justin Webster nails the three ball and UNLV scores 18 unanswered to jump in front 22 to 13. Keyshawn Gilbert the sophomore would fight down the stretch for the Rebels as UNLV takes a 33-30 lead at the half. 
Cougars come out hot from downtown in the second half. Washington State knocks down five straight threes to open up the second half. Game is tied up at 45. The Cougars finished 13 of 23 from deep, but Gilbert was a force in the second half, driving to the bucket and finishing for two. UNLV fights to stay on top, 53 to 47. The Cougars would keep this game close. TJ Bamba goes in for the easy layup and Washington State trails 73 to 70 with 6.5 to play, but UNLV would hang on to their lead 74 to 70 as Jackie Johnson ices his free throw and UNLV improves to 10 and 0, a career night for the sophomore Keyshawn Gilbert, who tells me he's feeding off the transfers who have helped him elevate his game this season. I mean, uh, they just, they uh, motivated me a lot um, just to see certain guys in the gym, like EJ, he always in the gym. It kind of just made me like step it up a little bit, even more than what I was doing. So it's just, uh, you know, we just feed off each other, really, like just, just helping each other, picking each other up, really. Seeing a huge leap from Keyshawn Gilbert this year from a freshman to a sophomore, dropping a career high 25 points, five rebounds, three assists, three steals against a Pac-12 opponent. What are you seeing from Keyshawn Gilbert? Ten wins into the season right now, coach. Uh, just continued improvement. Uh, you know, he, he in the summer, uh, in the Canada trip, in the fall, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he had a little bit of a, a, a turnover issue. You know, he, he made a lot of good plays, but he also made a, a lot of plays where he'd get himself into trouble, uh, try to do a little too much. And I think uh, throughout the 10 games, he's just continuously gotten better, uh, continuously gotten into the paint and made plays, but just uh, less mistakes kind of as the year has gone on. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think he was trying to shoot it when he should have passed it, tried to pass it when he should have shot it. But last night, I think he was probably at his most comfortable comfortable, you know, finishing with 25 points, having a huge impact in the game defensively, but also sharing the ball, a lot of good plays. And uh, and I'm just excited for him because he's gotten better these uh, first 10 games. And I think he's somebody at just 19, yeah. just, uh, just so young, young. Should, could be a, <laughs> and should be a freshman in college right now mm -hmm. uh, to continue to grow. And, and that's what we're excited about for Keyshawn. Yeah, Gilbert's going to be a, a problem for teams this season, no doubt. But want to talk about the 22 turnovers forced last night. I mean, number one in the country in turnovers forced per game right now, uh, forcing 21.5 turnovers a game. What a stat, Coach Kruger. I mean, something to hang your hat on right now is your defense, man. It, it's just been so much fun to watch your guys scrap on defense this season. Yeah, it was something uh, that we talked about a lot in the summer. Uh, even with the group that is returning, we talked about last spring. Uh, we didn't. We were last in the conference last year in turnovers forced, and, and the guys have really taken that to heart. Uh, created a lot of offensive opportunities by turnovers turnovers forced and you know we've played some teams on a couple nights that have had really hot shooting nights and if we weren't able to force turnovers and get uh, a significant amount more of looks at the rim every night uh, some of those games might have gone the other way so uh, guys are doing what they're doing playing for each other creating turnovers and uh, because of that uh, we're able to get off to the start yeah I'm getting nothing but texts and phone calls uh, talking about your defense and how impressed the whole country is right now with your guys like I mentioned earlier it doesn't matter where the running rebels play they're gonna come out and fight first ever dub for UNLV at the Dollar Loan Center. I heard on the broadcast that Justin Webster said he's never been to Henderson before coach. You got to let these guys <laughs> see some sunlight sometimes. Take a take a look around the city. We're breaking down the Hawaii dub next. You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Out to the DLC, UNLV's first time playing at the Dollar Loan Center, and look who it is, Barry Odom, already making himself a local, saying hi to fans after his introductory press conference. We'll pick it up in the first half, UNLV building a cushion lead. Justin Webster from the corner puts his team ahead 35 to 20. Coach, I don't think Webb ever misses from deep. We'll talk about that in a second. Rebels cruising in the first half. McCabe with that beautiful reverse layup on the halftime buzzer. He's so smooth with it. UNLV runs into the locker room with a 19 point lead at the half, 41 to 22. Rainbow Warriors don't go away. Harry Rudolph wide open from deep. Hawaii still in this thing, trailing 54 to 46. Later in the second, Rodriguez brings a spark to the Rebs. McCabe to Rodriguez for three. Luis Rodriguez racking up a game high 18 points at the DLC. Rodriguez just getting started. Check out this play. Hawaii's Noel Coleman slips and Rodriguez with the big slam as the crowd goes wild. As you 
UNLV hangs on to their lead 77 to 62. The players say they're feeling confident right now. Shooting the ball, confidence, and just just playing hard. You know, I think you know just a lot of stuff. Where our, our team is moving the ball, so when they're finding me, I'm just trying to make a play. And uh, the rest of the guys, everybody is either looking to score or to make a play for a teammate. So just staying ready. Uh, just playing with confidence. Um, you know, not being afraid to shoot the basketball. Uh, the coach is telling me, you know, if I step in and in rhythm, just knock it down. So um, just playing with a lot of confidence, catching the rhythm. And um, that's just leading to me uh, making shots. So. Well, that's just what we're seeing right now. Confidence from your guys, from Rodriguez, from Webster. Uh, Webster, three for four from three in this game. He's shooting 42% from three right now. I mean, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. he doesn't miss. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do you think about your guys just fighting down the stretch and not giving up on Wednesday night? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that was a, a first game where we kind of built a lead like that and then allowed the team to, to get it back into single digits. And uh, But they, they regrouped after a quick timeout, uh, made some uh, key defensive plays, made some shots that they uh, needed to go in. Um, so did what we needed to do to get wins. But, again, forced a team that's not used to turning the ball over to turn it over, which uh, kind of gave us a good sense of security as the game down the, went down the stretch that we were going to get stops that we needed to get. And, uh, and eventually our offense would kind of pick back up. Talk about that energy that Luis Rodriguez brings with, kind of that swag that he brings in the second half to be able to lift your team on offense. Well, as Keyshawn mentioned earlier, with uh, when you talk about EP, Lou, uh, EJ, guys that have played uh, you know, significant minutes at, at big time schools in, in, in other conferences yeah. to come in here and play as hard as they play. Mm -hmm. it, it's just such a breath of fresh air as a coaching staff because we don't ever have to get on anybody for playing hard because when you have fourth and fifth year guys playing as hard as they do, and Lou especially, mm -hmm. uh, you know, other guys recognize that and they know if they're not going to play as hard as them that they can't say anything. Yeah, Lou bringing that SEC experience, EJ bringing that Big 12 experience, all these guys bringing so many uh, different habits to the program and everyone is excelling with that right now. Coming up next, we're diving deeper into the story of Luis Rodriguez. The senior transfer from Ole Miss has been excelling at UNLV. Another stop in his journey as Rodriguez tells me how he's played basketball all over the world. And up next for UNLV, the Rebels host San Francisco at home next Saturday. I remember this 83-62 loss at USF last year. It stung for the Rebels. We'll hear how the running Rebels plan to stay undefeated and capitalize on their full week of practice. We'll be right back. You're watching the Rev Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. As Keyshawn Gilbert drives to the basket, went up way too hard, and then off of a turnover, the flush by Rodriguez. Now on an eight to nothing run for Luis Rodriguez himself. Welcome back to the Luis Rodriguez show. It's been a lot of fun watching Rodriguez this season who led his Rebels in scoring in back-to-back -back games at San Diego and against Hawaii this week. Basketball has taken this Inglewood native all across the world, playing ball at Woodstock Academy in Connecticut to playing for Ole Miss and going up against some of the best players in the game to even playing for Panama's national team last year. Rodriguez tells me he is proud to represent his Panamanian culture on the court and tells me it's a blessing to be coached by Kevin Kruger at UNLV as he hopes to inspire other young boys back home in Inglewood to be fearless and chase their dreams. He's doing a good job. Um, you know, he, we have pieces. I think he's using everybody how they're supposed to be used. Um, he gives us confidence every day and that's a big thing. Like even like transferring for moments, you know, like with the coach there, not to speak bad on him, but like he didn't do a very good job at giving his players confidence. And Coach Kruger does a great job at that. He does a great job at letting us play through mistakes, which is huge because, you know, we're going to make mistakes. It's basketball. I think, you know, in this game, you got to be resilient. You got to be like, you got to put the work in. So you got to be hard working, but you also got to, you got to just keep going. You got to believe in yourself. You know, the journey doesn't end until you want it to end. So just never stop. That's really what I'll say. And uh, like you said, I done been here, here, bounced around. But it's all because, you know, I got a goal. I got an end goal. And 
keep working. You know, you don't know where this game will take you. You never know what's next. So as long as you put your head down, you work and just keep going and believe you got a chance to make it, then that should be enough for you to just to keep going. Really. My favorite part about this show, getting to know the players, getting to know their stories, and, and knowing that he played for the national team in Panama. His dad is from Panama. He represents his Panamanian culture, which I think is so awesome. But, Coach, he talked about the confidence you give him, the confidence you instill in your players. Can you talk about just the close relationship that you have with your guys when they're in you know, crucial moments in the game? Well, I think it just it comes from them having a trust in, in the work they've put in. And, uh, and we talk a lot about the guys about it's getting results. And, and you got to believe in what you're going to go out there and do and how you're going to positively impact the team. And, uh, but as Webb mentioned, Keyshawn, Lou, uh, you know, we, we think we, we believe in our guys and their shooting ability. Uh, we, we knew we'd, at the beginning of the year we might take some time to get used to each other. But I think what we've seen the last handful of games the last couple weeks is guys getting used to each other, knowing uh, when to shoot, knowing when to make plays for each other and and so what you're just seeing I think the last few games but especially with Lou mm -hmm. is just those opportunities and the, the, those relationships starting to form uh, even better as, as they've gone on. Yeah he's only getting better averaging 11.9 points per game right now 5.5 rebounds he's only going to get better with you guys but let's take a look at what's on tap this week who the running rebels are playing just one game on Saturday at 2 p.m. at the Thomas Mack UNLV getting ready to take on the Dons like I said they want revenge in this game after last year dropping an ugly road loss in San Francisco last year. But coach, let's talk a little bit about the Dons. Like we mentioned, this is a really good team coming into town, an NCAA tournament team coming into town. How do you guys prepare for the Dons this week in a full week of practice? Well, it, uh, the calendar actually worked out in a good way for us, uh, j just in the sense of when you talk about Hawaii, Washington State and San Francisco, three coaches that came from the same coaching tree. Yeah. And uh, so I think we're going to see another similar style uh, as we saw with Hawaii and with Washington State, um, but, but with a group that's been together a long time. And, and last year, yeah, we went up there and we fought for about 30 minutes, but uh, kind of got away from us the last 10. So a great opportunity, a great home and home series that we had with San Francisco. So uh, we, we've got to, you know, kind of relish that opportunity and that, uh, that chance to get back at them on uh, Saturday night. All right, UNLV looking to go 11-0 this week. 2 p.m. tip-off at the Thomas and Mac. Coming up next, we're sitting down one-on-one -on -one with the new head coach of UNLV football, Barry Odom. Hear more from Coach Odom, his goals, and what SEC culture he's bringing to the UNLV locker room. Well, there was an overwhelming feeling of enthusiasm and excitement on the campus of UNLV on Wednesday morning as President Whitfield and Athletic Director Eric Harper welcomed Barry Odom as the 13th head coach of the UNLV football program. Odom is the first coach with previous head coaching experience on the FBS level since John Robinson, who coached from 1994 to 2004. Odom was the former defensive coordinator at Arkansas for the past two seasons. Prior to Arkansas, he was the head coach at Missouri from 2016 to 2019. His 2018 Missouri squad finished the regular season ranked 23rd in the college football playoff poll. Odom played linebacker at Missouri, coached at Missouri, and has deep roots in the SEC conference as he hopes his experience will lead UNLV to consistent winning seasons. Here's more from our one-on-one -on -one sit down with Coach Odom. Well, welcome to Las Vegas, Coach. We're all very excited. You can feel the enthusiasm in the room, as you mentioned earlier. But your initial thoughts of all of this sinking in and, and just all smiles from your family today. Yeah, very exciting. And uh, we're so thankful and honored to be here because we understand uh, what this opportunity is and thankful for that. Uh, anxious to get around our players, really get involved in the city. And uh, it happens fast, and, and that doesn't change. It's, we're, we're on a sprint, and uh, so it, it's been fun. It's been exciting, and uh, very thankful to have this opportunity. Doug Brumfield just told me how special it was yesterday for you to bring your family in to, to the players' meeting and have you introduce your family to them. What was just the overall reaction from the players yesterday? What did you see in their eyes? Yeah, number one, my, my family's my most important thing, and they're going to be involved in our, in our student-athletes' lives. So I wanted them to see them, you know, by put a name with a face. So that was important because we're going to invest in, in everything that we're doing from the city to the players to our program to the university. Um, I think, number one, the players 
were very, very attentive. Uh, and then the message when I started meeting individually, um, they're, they're ready for a leader, they're ready for the opportunity to go to work, they're anxious to have a chance to build this together, uh, and overall I would say very excited. Your resume is incredible, obviously really rooted in Mizzou, but the SEC experience you bring, just the coaching and the culture in the SEC, how does that help UNLV in the future? Yeah, I think number one, uh, Eric Harper's got a great vision on what UNOV is and is going to be, uh, so that helps as well. My experience is, is grown up in that league, so I think you always learn from your experiences. I think you can learn things from every place that you've been and apply them to your current situation, so I look forward to doing that here. Um, I think there's things that we can uh, put in play that will help us. I also understand that, that UNLV is, is unique, and uh, I look forward to that experience as well. Your initial goals here in the month of December with the transfer portal, early signing day, so much going on. What's next for you and what you need to get done? Well, the, the number one priority is my football team on the current roster, on making sure that I've got an opportunity to meet with every player individually that, that's here on, here on campus. I think that's so important. Number one, we can talk about goals, we can talk about vision, I can listen to them uh, and start establishing in a relationship which is so important recruiting as well recruiting you know future student athletes are going to join our program and organization there's an early signing date in december december 21st so we'll work tirelessly to, to put together what we think is a class that will help us win but also understanding that there's another signing date in february that really is going to be the target on trying to find the right fit for us well, the best part of this story is that he told us he snuck into the Fertitta football complex in spring, and when he was out there recruiting, he knew at that moment that UNLV was an elite program. We'll keep up to date with Coach Odom and all the roster moves he's making at UNLV. See you guys next week on the Red Zone.